Smoking the most potent forms of cannabis has been linked to almost a quarter of new cases of psychosis. Research from King's College London suggests the risk of getting the mental health condition, which can include paranoia and delusions, is three times higher for the users of skunk, as it's often known, like cannabis, than for people who use a milder form of the drug. Our Midlands correspondent, Sean Lloyd, has been talking to a former user. Uh, at that time, I did not know the damage about smoking stronger strains. It was just, I wanted the next one, the next one, the next one. Yeah, Liakat well, Zaman now volunteers at a drop-in centre for addicts. Absolutely. He smoked uh, cannabis, the including the highly potent the variety, variety known as skunk, for 30 years. It, it did bring me depression, it brought me anxiety, brought me to a very dark place. There was not much I wanted to do apart from get up, smoke cannabis, stay in bed watch daytime programs and that's all I used to like doing from morning till night. I didn't like going out anywhere, I was scared of going out, I'd get anxiety. The only time I really went out was to buy some more and come back. The research studied 780 people in South London. It found users of the potent skunk-like form of cannabis were three times more likely to develop psychosis than non-users. People who used it every day were five times more likely to be at risk. The milder form of the drug, called hash, was not associated to an increased risk of the mental health condition. The research into the use of skunk found it increased symptoms like hallucinations and paranoia, but not in every case. Skunk plays an important role, increases your chances of three, five times, but it's not the only cause of psychotic disorder. So lots of other things have an effect on outcome. Cannabis is now a homegrown industry. This room in Birmingham is used by emergency services during their training in how to respond to cannabis farms, increasingly found in people's homes. And the strength of the plants being grown is becoming more potent. Some varieties being cultivated contain more of the compound which is linked to psychosis. The possible dangers posed by the drug have traditionally been hotly contested, but the government says this research supports its position that cannabis should remain an illegal drug. Sean Lloyd, BBC News, Birmingham. Well, let's get reaction to what Sean just uh, said there. We're joined uh, by Peter Reynolds from policy group Clear Cannabis uh, Law Reform. Uh, Peter, the government says it should remain illegal. This study backs up their position. The campaigners are saying that and former users as well. I don't think the study backs up their position at all. What the study, what the study shows is that the reason we have stronger and stronger strains of cannabis available, or more, more, more importantly, strains that have less CBD. There are two important components in cannabis, THC and CBD. And what has happened in, in, in recent years is that because the market's underground, because it's run by criminals, that they have bred what criminals always do in these sort of markets, they bred stronger and stronger strains. It's exactly what happened with alcohol prohibition in the States. What happened when, when alcohol prohibition came in was people stopped drinking beer and wine and they went on to drinking moonshine. And that's what we have now. We have what I like to call moonshine weed. We have no control over it at all. Because this, not just this government, but successive governments have abandoned control. They've abandoned our children, abandoned our communities to criminal gangs. And it's the criminal gangs that run the cannabis market. And what we need to do, what, what, what I campaign for, is not less control. I campaign for more control. So what the government needs to do is it needs to take responsibility. You know, the re all these problems that we hear about are happening under the present policy. And the present policy has failed. But the problem is, well, I mean, we can see where you're coming from there, Peter. You're saying there are responsible smokers who don't want um, strong brands of cannabis, they don't want to go there. Uh, the problem is, for a lot of young people, that's how it starts. And young then they start looking for something stronger. Young people should not be young people should not be using cannabis. It's like anything. When you when when, when you're young, your mind, your brain is still developing, and anything, be it a substance or be it a life event, be it your parents getting divorced or failing your exams at school, any of these things can actually affect the way that your brain develops. But all of this is an argument for regulation. I mean, at the moment, it's easier for young people to go and buy cannabis than it is to go and buy tobacco or alcohol. You know, we need to bring the market under control. As I go back to what I said, the government has abandoned our young people and abandoned our communities to these criminals. What we need is real control. Because it's not going away. We consume three and a half tonnes of cannabis every single day in the UK. 
Is there not a danger, though, Peter, that if it is decriminalised, that it just encourages more criminal operations to produce a stronger brand? It encourages people to look for the brand that's not allowed to rebel. Well, de de decriminalisation is not enough. Decriminalisation is, is, is a would be a satisfactory halfway measure, but it would be a foolish measure because what decriminalisation would do is it would leave large parts of the market in the hands of criminals. We need the government to say again to take responsibility. You know, cannabis can be harmful. How harmful it is is still open to debate. Yeah, but you, you accept it. it can I accept be harmful, it can be harmful, it? Be harmful yeah. particularly to young people. Okay, yeah. but but the, but the actual debate about it. I mean, if you look to to uh, th this study was based on the South London and Maudsley NHS Mental Health Trust. If you look to Dr. Trevor Turner, who's the chief of psychiatry at the East London and City Mental Health Trust, he will tell you he's never seen a case of cannabis psychosis. So, so, so you know, for something that is, that the evidence is actually so much in dispute mm -hmm. and is actually so weak, you know, but, but I think everybody agrees it's a lot less harmful than other things that people consume. What we need to do is take responsibility and bring the market under control. Peter Reynolds, many thanks for your time this evening. Thank you for coming in as well. Thank you.